Hey everybody, it's episode 5, we're back. We had a week of hiatus, and now we're back with the show. This is called The Thief. Last time, uh, Starman woke up from his injuries and healed. He has super healing. And Cameron discovered that he had ice powers and that him and Courtney are... I don't know, they're dating now, I guess? And that was it. Nothing else happened. That was the whole episode. You don't believe me? It was. Believe me. Go back and look at it. Nothing else happened. It was a quiet one. A quiet one. I don't suspect this one will be quiet. He may be in the tunnels under Blue Valley. Oh yeah, we're going to the tunnels. And now she's finally free. Is this all about Cindy? Five days ago, we're gonna to get to see her what happened. From her perspective, maybe? Oh, uh, what you doing with that shiv, Cindy? We need to go back further than five days. We need to go 5.1 days back. Grab the laptop. But the star gang are coming. What are you going to do with the laptop? Come back for it later? Oh. She didn't shoot him. I didn't do it. Maybe she only took out her chiv for... You know, she came across the body, she's like, oh, red alert. Meanwhile, the date is still going on. Gonna do some more research tonight. I'm gonna research what I can do. How? Uh, superhero internet? We'll figure this out together. Are they spinning? That's not working. Wait, how? That's not... That doesn't, make it, that doesn't make sense. Did it just spin around in a circle? Good night. You know, there's so much in love that their world is turning around. Why are you smiling? A uh, new boyfriend? Just, uh, you know when we killed his yeah. father? Mom's at work and I just dropped Mike off at Jakeem's. That's okay. Right. I can find something to eat. Right. Just drop Mike off at Jakeem's. Because Mike can't be in the show. He has to be on his little side adventure, fun adventure with... Jakeem and Seth Green, where they get into all sorts of hijinks, because that's the only role they have in the show. <clears throat> hey, Mike used to be a, a rounded character, integral to the, the family unit in season one. Oh, I've ranted about this already. Now he's like, well, he's Jakeem's friend, you know? He came in clutch, though, in one of the episodes, a couple of episodes ago, didn't he? Well, Rick and Yolanda, they went down into the tunnels. Oh, yeah, they're all in the tunnels. See if there's any sign of Dragon King being alive. Good. So, <laughs> what are you going to do now? I've got homework. Yeah, Pat. Just leave her do her homework. She's in love, Pat. Is she going to do some ice research down in the basement? Yeah, the files. Can't wait to see what this password is. We we've been waiting for for episodes. It's got to be something gambling related or Becky related. It's got to be something really easy to crack once you know it. I wonder, I wonder what Cindy's actually trying. You know. Anyway, are are our team going to find her? Because she is in the tunnels, and they are in the tunnels, and then they're going to accuse her of killing him. And she's like, "No, I didn't kill him. I just stole his laptop. I'm just the thief. I'm not a killer." That's why the episode's called The Thief and Not The Killer. And then they're gonna see her dragon thing and they're gonna be like, oh, it was you. You were there. And she was like, I know, you know I was there. You saw me there. What's that boy? You saw her there too. <laughs> Lee Thompson, isn't she uh, Back to the Future? Why should I hack your laptop? You. Just do it for me. With your own gadgets. Ooh. Using his own hacking gadgets against himself. Oh, that was super. That was super. We didn't even find out what the password was. Aw. Looking for her father's lab locations? Most of the tunnels have collapsed. Only a few rooms left. Run for it. Yeah, maybe they won't find her. The ISA meeting room. Mmm, still warm. Is there any coffee brew? 
Someone's been working here. Mm -hmm. Oh, we can hear the chemicals. Sylvester, what do you think? What are you looking at, Sylvester? Someone's made an awful lot of effort to cover their tracks. Mm -hmm. It almost killed me for getting on them. Mm -hmm. And I don't like it. The ISA mocking me! Uh, Storm Map? We are gonna find them, and they're gonna pay! Rick! Rick! You're usually the angry one. Maybe we need another Starman conversation? <laughs> for the fourth episode in a row? Apologize for losing your shit with all the kids. There's definitely something more, more going on with them than just normal issues, right? Sylvester? I lost my temper. I must look pretty unhinged. Yeah, you do. Any advice? Barbara? I just never planned on being a parent. Before I met Pat, I never thought I'd have a son. I wasn't sure how I was going to do stepping into Mike's life. But I try. Be your best. And if you have a bad moment, just help them learn from it. I can't. I don't. Hey. Hey. Uh, watchers of Stargirl. My reactions to Stargirl, you know what's coming. What are we doing? What are we doing? Again? I can't believe we're doing it again. <laughs> I can I, I complain. I know I know nobody's watching this. I know none of the creators are. They don't, they wouldn't even have time to change their show even if they saw it. We can't. We 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 had enough of these conversations. Another one. At the exact same conversation with them every episode. It's crazy. It's a. And I said it last time. I. It feels like when the Flash used to bring. You know, all every episode we'd have two characters in the corridor. You know, one of them, the other, giving the other a pep talk. I mean, nobody wants to watch this. Nobody. Cut this stuff I'd prefer a 20 minute show that didn't have any of these scenes because it's not fun it's not fun for me it's not fun for you it's not fun for you watching me react to it <laughs> you know I have to apologize because of your shit come on star girl be better than this shit I feel like I have to give you a pep talk you can be better than this star girl the show the writers Stop with the bullshit conversations. I don't care about Starman and his issues anymore. I didn't care at the start and I really don't care now. Just write him out of the show. Just kill him off. Do anything. Soon, please. I know. I know you can't change anything. Are we going to have 13 episodes with a conversation like this in every one? It's just ridiculous. It's absolutely god-awful ridiculous. Hey, different person every time, right? Pat gives him one, Barbara gives him a... Mike, Mike, it's your turn with Starman to give him a talk. You know, tell him what it's like from a kid's perspective. How about that? Buddy, buddy, you're up. Tell him, give him the dog's perspective on how he should change his, turn his life around. I hope there's something deeply he was changed when he was resurrected he did something to his brain that made him whatever whatever character he is right now because otherwise it's the worst written character in tv show history <laughs> i take that back i take that back there's been oh you don't want to know the characters i've seen in tv over the last few years i take it back at least i can make fun of this <laughs> some shows you can't even make fun of and that makes it even more frustrating, you know? Well, how's it going with Mike? Yeah, Mike. Bring Mike in here. He's my son. Oh. I'm really grateful every day for it. Oh, jeez, Barbara. That, that's a good moment. I like that. Pity Starmon was in the scene, too. That's, that's not an answer. You don't like me very much, do you? Uh, I don't. don't. I don't. You stopped Icicle. And he's the one that put me in the ground. He did drive into him. So you got me justice. Don't spread that around though. Cameron's Cameron will kill us. But going up against Eclipso? That was real superhero stuff. 
Yeah, I'll tell it to everyone else. Like I proved everybody wrong about the Star Spangled Kid by going places and doing things that people said I couldn't. That's what Mike's been doing. Maybe. Which key? Okay, fellas, who wants an omelet? Huh? I want pancakes, oh, please. Hey, yeah, Pat. fancy. Pancakes. Well, Dragon King has hidden labs across the country. Oh, yeah. Cindy's does? tracking them down. Yeah, the Crimson Avenger and I tracked them back in the day. But I can wait until after school if you want to come. No, no, no. It's, check out it's okay. I've got a date. Okay. You've got it covered. Enjoy the waffles. <laughs> I love omelets. how suspicious we're, Pat is. We're having omelets. I want pancakes. I want pancakes, Pat. God damn it. I'll never get my pancakes. The tunnels are empty. That's good. Hey, I've said this before, but hey, does anybody watch Superman and Lois? Did you ever, do you know, do you know my favorite part of Superman and Lois? They're horrible, horrible school. This, the murky colors palette. It's the most disgustingly shitty school you've ever seen on TV. Oh, I'm really, I'm really letting, are they CW too? The CW have it today, aren't I? Where a star girl, always colorful. The school is bright. Uh, the colors are vibrant. That's the best the best thing about this show. Superman and Lois could learn a lot from Stargirl and their choices with color. I know Superman and Lois are all, oh, we're going to be so arty. We're going to be so cinematic with her, her choices. Screw that. Screw that in your yellow houses. Your murky, stupid yellow houses. Your dank, dark school hallways of doom. And all that shit. Thank God for Star Girl. Star Girl. Star Girl. Yeah, because that means we still have a chance of catching this perp ourselves. Early class, freshman. <laughs> oh, police. Ryan? Travis? No, no, police. No, no, no. Look, I really wish we could figure this out, fellas. I really wish these bullies were nicer to us. Oh, oh no, but it's gonna be weird. Please. I'm gonna have to hit you really, really hard in your quite handsome face. That's actually funny. That's really funny. Yeah, Cindy! Yeah, yeah! Kick their asses! Kick their asses! Why do you care? I don't. Thanks, Cindy. Don't fall in love. Mike, don't fall in love with her. Jakeem, don't fall in love with her. She's out of your league, guys. I got an idea. No? Are you looking for Solomon Grundy? We buried him. He's looking for an underground lab. Nice. Ah, oh, passcode. Can you hack it, Cosmo? Cindy can use his hack the the hacking device to get in. Hey Beth, can you hack something for me? What's up, Doc? The teacher. I'm in the middle of a test. Oh come on, Beth. It'll only take a sec. Beth's cheating. She's looking stuff off on the internet, miss. Thanks, Popcorn. Beth. You did it, Beth. <laughs> My goggles are giving me the answers to the math test. That's great! Congrats! <laughs> Forget the answers, Beth. Forget them. Oh, it reminds me of my mother. Who's feeding this thing? Thanks. Thanks. And tell Zeke I said hello. Ooh. Ooh. Shouldn't they be sitting on opposite sides, hey, looking at each other? Nice. It's Courtney. I mean, you've noticed it too, right? She just hasn't seemed like herself, you know? It's like She seems happy. It's like she's happy. <laughs> she has a crush on someone, Pat. So that's what this is? I think so. Hey, hey, just because she's a teenager, you don't have to dis diminish her feelings by calling it a crush. And just speaking up for the teenagers of the world. You know, you got, you're feeling love for somebody. You're feeling love. Don't let, don't let adults, nobody, no teenagers, what is this? Don't let adults tell you it's just a crush or puppy love or any of that crap your feelings are are justified now are your hormones absolutely crazy and are they telling you to do things you shouldn't do and are you going to still love this person in three years no but um yeah don't let anybody call it a crush <laughs> yeah. who's the guy i don't know oh you're not going to be happy when you find out who it is Hey, bud. Uh, hey, hello, that's Bob, why they're huh? sitting at this side. We're doing our own investigation into Stephen Sharp's murder. Oh, nice. We started by interrogating everyone he owed money to. Interrogating? We dangled them off above tall building to get answers. <laughs> yeah. Hey, get this. 
<laughs> oh, nice, nice. We want to hear all about that. Say, Maria, we'll, we'll get the check, please. <laughs> Remember when they used to be? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Want to be a team? Remember, like, season one? Fine, partners, sure. More chemistry, less talking. How can we do both, though, dude? Aren't you in Arrested Development? Cameron and I have been hanging out. In a bad place right now about his dad. He doesn't know. You can't tell him. Cameron yeah, he'll freak. Why are you talking to me about this and not Cat Girl or. Cat Girl? <laughs> Knew you wouldn't judge me and that you'd give it to me straight. I kind of like the idea of you and Cameron. I do too. Mm -hmm. No one wants to hear how awful their father is. Wouldn't you rather still think Strymon was your dad instead of some degenerate who didn't want you? Dad, not not this season. Not anymore. Yeah, don't don't tell. Let Cameron find out on his own. Oh well, actually, I don't know. This whole thing, Cameron's gonna freak. Cameron needs to be told everything, and everybody needs to be told everything a as soon as possible. That's the best for everybody, so we can move past it, so we can work through it, so we can explode and argue and all that stuff. The longer it goes on, the worse it becomes when he finds out that she knew that and that they were involved in his death and, you know, well, it wasn't them, it was Mike. Mike did it. Just cast the blame on poor Mike. Operation Dragon Queen is a go. What are we doing? What are we doing? What do you want? We have a preposition for you. Uh, a proposition? And a woman with your skills it yeah, needs keep, to be keep it coming, Mike. Even worshipped. To, no, oh. tone it down, Jakeem. So what do you say? You ditch those ingrates and you join us. I don't see this happening. It's never gonna happen. But we haven't told Damn. you the perks. The perks. Tell her the perks. We got a pen that grants wishes. Hi. Oh, hey, Cameron. Dude. We're in the middle of a conversation, so get lost. I forgot these two had beef. Exactly. I'll see you later. Yeah. Don't tell me you're hanging out with that creep. He's not a creep. Courtney, but Cameron's dad? Cameron's not his dad any more than I'm mine, Yolanda. Yeah, Yolanda. Ooh, we won't be having a, meet a little lunch meetings anymore. Who's coming? Hey, Cindy. You dating Courtney? Why does that matter to you? Courtney and I are friends now. Just looking out for me, girl. Yeah, don't hurt her. Strengths. Talking about your mommy. Don't lose it. Don't lose it. Don't lose it. Then my choice about Bruce made us pick sides, and that eventually destroyed us. Yeah, don't do what I did. Do. Don't do what Donnie don't does should have done whatever i had to do to bring the team back together but... learn from my mistakes please i still think cindy's not telling us something okay. a whole bunch of go stuff with your gut. follow it i still have to follow fix her. the hourglass i'll work on that beth sorry is it her parents i need to kill my parents starman could you help me with that Killer Colts. Okay? Oh, I know this. I know this song. Maybe I don't. I talked to Cameron about you. I know his grandmother is a freak like Jordan. So I wanted to push Cameron's buttons and try and trigger him and... He didn't kill anybody though. I did. And you already knew that, didn't yep. you? I'm going to help him control them. I've read the story and it only ends one way. With an ice... It'll go through the heart. It'll be different this time. Courtney has super love powers. She's like positivity shines through every pore. You know, she's annoying like that, Cindy. Rick, hey, you're still here. I can't figure the hourglass out. Well, you turn it, you turn it over, and it. It's got to be the limiter that limits it to working only an hour a day. That's got to be busted. If I just remove the limiter, yeah, you can be strong forever. Twenty-four hours a day. I'm not sure. You get to beat up Cameron. Your dad created that for a reason. Yeah, but great power becomes great stomping. See you tomorrow. 
No, oh, he's removing this limiter, that's for sure. And then he'll do something he regrets and then he'll change his ways. Classic storytelling. It doesn't have to be that way, CW. You could go a different way with it. Hey. Oh, could, could we kill these? How can we help? Stay out of my life as Dr. Midnight. Just stop. Nice. Nice, finally. <laughs> they're either getting a divorce or they're all, Hey, Beth. You know, get some balance in your lives. There's the limiter. You can change you have to change your name to Dayman though. Oh, watch yourself, Cindy. Yolanda's following you. Hey little buddy. Anybody feed anybody feed you? Oh she's sneaking into her house while she's away. This is that's not breaking and entering, but it's definitely entering, Yolanda. What you gonna see, Yolanda? The laptop. I knew it. Hey, how does she know that's the gambler's laptop? I'm gonna kick her ass. How does she know what it looks like? All laptops look the same. That was episode five. The thief. The thief being Yolanda for breaking in. She didn't break in. She climbed in a window and took Cindy's laptop. That could just be Cindy's laptop. It's not, but it could be. And she doesn't know what the gambler's laptop looks like. Maybe they sent out a little picture of it, in case anybody saw it. It's about yay big, you see? It's, a, it's a rectangular. If you see a rectangular laptop, that's the killer. That's the killer. We already know the killer is like some super... Right? But we don't. We don't. We only know that uh, that's what happened to Starman. Also, we did hear that noise when the, before the gambler got killed. A monstrous noise. I don't think Cindy's capable of making that noise. She is capable of shiving him, but not much else. I like that we flash back five days, but just after he died. Uh, a lot of good in this episode. Let's talk about the bad straight away. Starman, come on. Another scene, another scene. With Starman doing something really ridiculous, kind of out of nowhere, really. He saw their their pictures on the wall, and he's like, "Ah, they're mocking me. I need to in front of in front of the gang, losing his shit, and then feeling all contrite about it afterwards, and needing somebody to talk to him. At least it wasn't Pat this time; it was Barbara." telling him about making a, setting a good example and look for the rest of the episode he did set a good example with Mike you told Mike he should go out and get what he wants you know he's, we're a lot alike you gotta go out there and you gotta prove to people that you're worth being at the show and I'm like Mike that's what Mike's been doing with Jakeem all season trying to prove himself uh, they tried to recruit Cindy Fellas, fellas. You need to wait a few years, wait a few years, okay? Uh, but yeah, and then he was giving good advice to the rest of them. Oh, although, I'm not, I'm not even sure if it is good advice. One, he told Yolanda to basically follow, investigate Cindy, which we know is kind of the wrong thing to do. Two, he told Rick about the limiter, which is going to lead him to becoming superpower 24-7 and, like, wrecking shit, which is the wrong thing to do. And he told Beth that her goggles were cool for giving her the answers to her test, which is cheating. Starman is cheating. So even though it looks like he took Barbara's advice on board, with Mike, Beth, Rick and Yolanda, I'm not sure he gave them the best advice. Although it sounded like it at the time. His intentions were good, is what I'll say. Even though the end results might not be. It was a Cindy-centric episode, which is always good. Her beating up those bullies. Uh, 
It was great, although it was strange to see Jack Bullies on TV again. I feel like we phased... Like, I'm not saying that bullies don't exist in the real world. Bullies will, will always exist. But I feel like over the last 10 years, they've sort of phased jock bullies, that sort of stereotype, out. And they only use them in this episode to... for the joke, for the sur- subversion, the, the wish, and then for Cindy to beat them up. So they were. it was only for the joke. But it was still odd to see it. Hey, give me your lunch money. Butt heads, you know? Biff. And who knows where the Cameron Courtney thing is going? Who the frick knows? Who knows where Rick versus Cameron is going? They gotta have a showdown, right? Now that Rick's super strong and the next time they see each other, he'll probably give him a punch. Who knows what Cameron's grandparents are gonna do? Who knows who's, when anybody's ever going to tell Cameron anything? Because since season one, that's what we've been doing to Cameron, not telling him things. His father didn't tell him anything. His grandparents aren't telling him anything. Courtney's not telling him anything. Not even Cindy's telling, telling him stuff. Cindy was testing him. She didn't know he had powers. She tried to bring it out of him by bringing up stuff from his past. So it seemed like she was being evil in that scene, but she was actually doing Courtney a, a favor. Even though Courtney already knew about it. Anyway, a lot of good energy in this episode. Last episode was a snooze fest, but this one had a lot going on, even though the story didn't move too much. Uh, it was kind of fun to watch. Apart from that one scene, it wasn't even Starman losing it. It was it was the scene afterwards that I just ah that if I had the power to skip ahead and never watch again I would do it um and I think everybody everybody has to be on board this now I, I'm not an outlier I don't believe I'm being a curmudgeon or anything I believe everybody watching is thinking please don't give us another pep talk for Starman please we don't need we don't want it do it off do it off camera. If in the next episode he says, yeah, I talked to Mike and Mike Mike really gave me some great advice, but we don't see it. <laughs> That'll be great. That'll be great. You know? Because it's just filler. It's just filler. We don't want filler. Drama, mealy, watered down, nonsense filler in our show. That's what I say. That's what I say. Uh, you can be better than that. You're already better than uh, Superman and Lois uh, with your color palette, but you can be better with the the scripts and the the writing and all that. You already have more interesting characters than them too. Unfortunately, uh, season two of Superman and Lois kind of. But uh, yeah, right. That's this. Let's let's talk about next week. Next week is called the betrayal. There's so many secrets up in the air right now that anything could be a betrayal. You know, any somebody might find out something, and and they'll see it as a betrayal. So it it's hard to know. We know that Yolanda is going to go crazy because she found the laptop. She's going to tell everybody. But could be could be unrelated to that too. Oh, Beth finally told her parents to grow up and become three dimensional people. You know, that was that was that was a long time coming too. And uh, I really thought they were going to start a story where Mike was falling in love with Cindy. Just the way she walked away, you know, like a boss. You could easily see it happening. Just wait a couple of years, Mike. You'll be taller than her then. You know? Uh, I'm not saying you'll have a shot in a couple of years, but she's never going to take you seriously at the moment. Well, because you're younger than her and you're not you're not cool to be seen with. 
Oh, so many reasons. So many reasons. Great to see her and Courtney in science class together. Does good season one vibes from that. I like that. And they called it out. They called back to it as well. I like when they, they know their own property. And about five different establishing shots of the school this episode. Um, the extras got uh, overtime for this one. Although, do you think they do all those shots in one day? You know, at the start of the season, they just film all 13 episodes. Right, we got 100 extras. You're all going to be outside the school. We're going to film all day long. And we're going to splice up those bits and we're going to use them. That's the easiest. That's the cheapest way to do it, right? I wouldn't be surprised if there's commonalities between who we see outside in the episodes. Oh, as there should be. If it's a school, right? As it should be. Is anybody going to feed that lizard? I hope so. Poor guy's down here in the lab on his own. I don't know if he can get out. I don't know what Cindy's looking for in the labs. Maybe a cure? Or something else? I'm not quite sure about that. And we never got to see the password. The laptop password. I made such a big deal of it and we never saw it. And the gambler made such a big deal of his suitcase combination being 777. And his, you know, it was all, it was all setting it up for it, wasn't it? That's the way I felt about it anyway. Oh, and the final thing I'll say is that that scene in the diner. Oh, by the way, what's her name? Maria and Zeke. Ooh, ooh, ooh. But Barbara and Pat sitting side by side in that booth made no sense whatsoever as a couple. If you're going in there as a couple, you're going to eat, you're going to talk. You just sit opposite each other, you know, you chat. It only made sense because of the Crocs that we they didn't know were going to appear, but the producers and writers and directors knew. So they had to have them awkwardly sitting next to each other eating just so the crocs could slide in. And they are usually the highlight of the episode. We didn't get to see much of them. But I did like their appearance and talking about hanging people off the you know, the tops of buildings. And Paula gave Barbara a little shake of the head. <laughs> it was very funny. Anyway, good episode, apart from that one scene that we shall never speak of again. We shall never see again. And I'm gonna Oh, next episode, if I see another scene like that, oh, I oughta. Something's going on with Starman. It's not just, he's not just having a midlife crisis. His brain has been altered. I'll be very disappointed if it's just him coming, having issues, you know, normal issues, because he's just unhinged and a lot of the time. Right. Get out of here. I'll see you next week. <laughs>